Well, it'll be a good lesson for, for Damian. You know, first two games he guarded uh, great centers who were more uh, big guys near the paint, near the hoop with Adams and, uh, and Gobert. So this is more of a challenge uh, extending out to the three-point line. So we've got to do a good job of staying in front of him. And, you know, he's such a great passer. Uh, our perimeter players can't get back cut because he'll pick us apart from there. So it'll be a, a good test for not only for Damian but for our team. How's Andre done? Andre's good. Uh, he's uh, he should play, assuming we uh, warm up out there as well. Livingston's think, out though. Yeah, Livingston's out. Is it just minor little knee thing? Uh, yeah, just uh, it's a knee contusion. I yeah, think. yeah, it's a knee contusion. So just um, I imagine this is how it's going to go. You know, this year we're going to tr try to give Sean rest wherever we can, and if he's banged up, we're not going to play him. Um, you know, we need to have him ready for. Uh, a long haul, and um, so nights like this, if he's banged up, we'll, uh, we'll rest him. And fortunately, Andre's back, so uh, you know we'll be able to uh, to put Andre in those minutes that Sean played last game. This is the Steve. front side of your first back-to-back. -back. Do you have like back-to-back -back resting plans for guys that maybe why Sean's taking tonight? No, no, that has nothing to do with the back-to-back. -back. It's just no, he's he's pretty sore, so I don't have any plans. Um, for back to backs. Uh, at this point, we're going to just kind of take it as it comes. Jokic and Gary Harris are one of the better kind of DHO duos. Uh, and we, when you look at them, what do, you, what do you see that makes them kind of a tough cover with those two working off each other? Well, uh, Harris can shoot threes off the DHO, and uh, we know Jokic is one of the best passers uh, out of that set, so it makes a lot of sense to put them together in uh, pick and rolls and DHOs. And, uh, and those, are, those are tough to guard. So. Uh, that's part of the challenge playing against this team. They, uh, they execute, they spread you out. You've got shooters, and they got a, a fulcrum offensively. They can they can go through with uh, Jokic. Do you see the uh, incident last night in LA? And just wondered if you had any thoughts of it uh, after a few days. I know you saw it at some point. So I saw. It. Yeah. Well, what, what did you think of what, of what you saw? I have no comment. <laughs> Raymond's back there nodding his head. Good job. <laughs> You happy, Ren? Very much. Okay, so. good. Okay. Hey, Steve, regarding the the conditioning and the, the altitude here, how did you see the progress from game one to game two with that? Uh, I personally did really well with this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I thought uh, the players got over the hump conditioning wise uh, in Salt Lake. You know, game one, we looked tired. Um, we hadn't had a preseason game where our, uh, our big minutes guys played more than about. 20 minutes. I don't think anybody got more than 30 minutes in a preseason game. So, game one, um, I, I, it looked to me like we were tired, and then uh, I was worried about the, the altitude in Salt Lake um, and such a hard-fought game. But uh, it felt like uh, our guys fought through it and got over the hump. And uh, hopefully, with the day off yesterday, uh, we'll, we'll be okay tonight. Clay seems to start seasons a little slow. Is there any specific reason for that, or is it just kind of? Yeah, uh, you know, I'm, it's nothing we're worried about. It's nothing Clay's worried about. It. But you're right; it does seem to happen occasionally. Um, I don't know. Sometimes you go through preseason, especially if you have a great preseason, and then it's like psychologically, it's like, man, none of those count. You know, shooting 80 <laughs> percent, none of them count. Uh, so you know, it's a fresh slate, and, uh, and so you know, a bad game or two is sort of demoralizing, and then you kind of settle in. And you go, yeah, we got. Uh, Eight months of this ahead, or whatever, and eighty more games, and uh, so he'll settle in, and that's um, that's kind of how it goes. Does the shot look good to you, though? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Over there yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I thought he did a good job uh, in the uh, Utah game of uh, the second half, uh, maybe the second quarter, getting to the rim. You know, his jump shot was off early, and he got to the foul line a couple times, pump fake, jumped uh, jumped into Exum. I thought that was great. Anytime any player is struggling a little bit with this outside shot, if you can get a layup or some free throws, it helps. And Clay did a good job of that. With, with Sean out, is there any thought to maybe give Jacob uh, in kind of his first NBA seconds? Uh, we could. I mean, if the game calls for it, uh, I would definitely throw him out there. Steve, just through the first two games, uh, your rate of attempting threes is down just a little bit. Is that anything by design? Our what? Rate of taking threes? No, it's not by design. It's uh, you know, it's, we just uh, we're, we're we're kind of top heavy with our three point shooting. You know, some teams uh, have a roster full of guys, and 
and some teams are really playing to shoot the three as often as possible. We don't really do that. We sort of shoot them when they present themselves. Um, so first two games they haven't they haven't been up there, but I don't I don't think there's any particular reason for that. Steve, I've seen some of your comments about Boogie, although you don't have him on the floor, but he's been able to help some of your younger bigs so far. Maybe off the court, can you expand on that a little? Uh, yeah, he's just been very vocal, especially with Damian Jones. Um, you know, he's trying to provide as much advice and counsel for DJ as possible, and uh, he's been a good resource for him. And it's also good to have him engaged in the game. You know, I mean, he's he's been out for a long time. He's dying to get back, uh, but at this point, all he can do is continue his rehab and his work, and then you know, engage himself in the game emotionally and mentally. So he's doing the best he can with all that. Steve, is there an ideal number of threes you'd like your team to take in terms of no, stats? Not really. How about not really? Me? I like good shots. You know, I just that. like I like uh, open shots, whether they're twos or threes. And uh, we have a a team that shoots the mid-range shot really well. Steph Clay and KD are all brilliant mid-range shooters. So is Sean Livingston. Uh, so we don't really have a, a formula, or you know, we don't scold guys for making rhythm 17 footers we actually pat them on the back so <laughs> we're a little different than some teams but um yeah the, the league is trending more and more that way where you know you see four different three-point shooters on the floor at once maybe even five it's hard to guard uh, but our team's built a little differently and we're just always looking for for good rhythm have you ever met or interacted with michael porter jr is there anything you can offer a young player like that with a unique Injury history like that? Uh, actually, we, I've never met him, um, and I can't really offer anything to him. But uh, we have the same agent, Mark Bartleson, uh, who was my representative most of my career, and that's who's representing him now. And so I've had a few conversations with Mark about uh, his progress. So I haven't talked to Michael, but I'm definitely pulling for him and hoping that uh, his rehab goes really well and that he's back soon. All right. Thank you.